The Egyptian revolution brought hope and opportunity to a people long oppressed by an unpopular dictator and his subordinates. Egyptian Coptics joined Muslims in the Tahrir Square protests. But so far, the freedoms they've desired remain elusive, and this minority Christian community is under siege. In terms of the actual number of attacks on cops, they have increased since Mubarak stepped down. And that has a lot of uh, cops worried. Is this a harbinger of the future? Many Christians are now considering leaving the country. So far, 2011 has been a tragic year for Egypt's Christians. It began on New Year's Day with a horrific suicide bombing at St. Mark's Church in Alexandria. Security guard Magdi Wahib was at the church entrance when services concluded shortly after midnight. I suddenly found myself blown inside the church. I didn't lose consciousness, but I felt severe pain in my abdomen, hand, and sides. Wahib was taken to a hospital where he underwent surgery. A piece of shrapnel nearly seven inches long was removed from his abdomen, along with 30 inches of his intestines. Wahib was among nearly 100 Christians injured in the attack. 23 people were killed. The Christians here at St. Mark's Church in Alexandria certainly know that the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. They'll persevere. Their church may even grow as a result of this incident. And they're determined to fight for a new future here in Egypt, one where their rights are honored and they have religious freedom. Christians say they're not treated as equals, even though they were the majority here for more than 1,000 years. Today, they are only about 13% of the population. 86% of Egyptians are Muslim. Christians rarely receive government permission to build new churches. These members of a church in Giza near Cairo told CBN News they obtained a building permit after a lengthy 10-year battle. Then, last November, security police laid siege to their partially constructed building. At least two Christians were killed, dozens were injured in the attack. Hit by a rubber bullet, taxi driver Nasir Fakri Bakit is now unemployed because he lost sight in his left eye. The policemen inside the church were insulting us and beating us as if we were criminals. They shouted Allahu Akbar, as if we Christians are not people, as if we are not human, only like animals without any rights, as if we are not Egyptians. And police and militant Muslims aren't the only ones attacking Coptics. A new wave of assaults are coming from the Egyptian army. This is a home video of a military attack against a monastery near Alexandria last January. After local police abandoned their station, the monks at St. Beshoy's built a wall at the monastery entrance to protect themselves from intruders. The army responded, sending in 100 soldiers with tanks and light artillery to destroy the wall. Six people were injured, including a monk whose spleen had to be removed because of the attack. We were very sad because we didn't know why the army attacked like this. The army is supposed to protect us, not beat us and torture us. We are innocent, we pray and try to help people. That's all we are doing. Christians say the incident here at the Beshoy Monastery is just another example of why they need protection from a new government. They say there must be changes in their new constitution that include them. But the strongest political group at this time, the Muslim Brotherhood, insists that Islamic law, Sharia, remain the basis of Egyptian law. It opposes democratic changes in the Constitution that would grant equal rights and allow Christians and Muslim women to become president. Human rights advocate Munir Bashara spends most of his spare time on Facebook, sharing democratic ideas with young people. He says many Egyptians are religious, but will not support a theocratic government similar to the one in Iran. He warns voters against being fooled by the Muslim Brotherhood. Muslim Brotherhood, they are speaking about democratic, but inside themselves, they, if they're going to get the power, it will be last democratic and going to be dictatorial again. Paul Marshall says the United Nations and the U.S. State Department are naive and overly optimistic about the Muslim Brotherhood. So they're saying, well, the younger generation in, in the Brotherhood may be much more open. I think that's true. But the 23-year-olds aren't running the Brotherhood. And Marshall says the Hamas experience in Gaza is a harbinger for Egypt's future under the Brotherhood. Hamas is the Muslim Brotherhood of the Palestinians. They won an election, and there's been no election since. And they killed off the Palestinian Authority opponents. And that's why many Coptics may leave. They fear what may come.
Still, many like Father Halmanut to the Beshoi Monastery say they'll stay. The church has existed in Egypt for 2,000 years and will survive no matter what happens. We are trusting in God and we are not afraid. Jesus told us that the people against us use the hand of human beings. But we have the hand of God. The one who's covering us will save us. Gary Lane, CBN News, Cairo, Egypt.